Okay, you're recording. Okay. This is Rachel Moody. They were our first foster dogs ever. Um, what happens to them is their mom got shot and it died and the puppies didn't know there was like 11 of them and they didn't know she was dead and they were still feeding off of her and some good Samaritans came and picked them up and took them to Pup Squad, which is this organization for um, troubled dogs. And we take care of them. The fostering process we do is we take care of them, grow them up until it's time for them to be adopted. And y'all know those adoption events you can find at like Petco and stuff. My mom runs those. And when we take care of the dogs, we take them to that and we put them in cages. We have to make them look cute and we have to make them attract people so that they'll come and they'll adopt them. Um, I'm not going to go on about how the whole, like, or how it goes taking care of them because most of y'all know how that goes. One thing you do want to know about taking care of young pups is there's a lot of poop. There's this, this stage as it goes from like diarrhea. It's, I know it's disgusting, but you can leave for three hours, go do something, come back, and the entire bottom of the cage is full of wet, gross poop. And we have to clean that. And then it'll go to stages until it's solid, but you, one thing you always have to check is their poop, so it's really important. That's Marianne and Darla. There was one more. Um, he was adopted though. Those are the two girls that were left over. Um, they came to us with sarcop sarcoptic mange. Do you know what that is? It's like a skin disease that humans can get it too, but with them, it's their hair falls out and it's it's really itchy for them. We have. I wish I had a, a picture of them, but we called him the Yeti. He was like this big, like this tall, big, and he was white. And he lived like across the hall from me. We put him in a room, in a cage, in the corner, and we created um, grass out on the balcony. We let him out, and he would go and um, do his business. He would go be a dog, bark at other people that went by, but he'd be up on the balcony. The reason is because he had heartworms, and the treatment, you have to keep them really, really still and contained that, um, y'all know what heartworms does? Dogs? No? No. <laughs> the, they're these worms that, with the mosquitoes that go around, there are other people in our neighborhood that have heartworms with the dogs, and the blood will get transferred, they'll bite our dog, and they lay, the little worms will like lay eggs inside, like on their skin, and they'll get inside of them these worms that will go from lengths like this big to like hundreds, well, not hundreds, like, and it wraps around the heart and whenever it gets excited, the heart will start beating really fast and it squeezes around their heart eventually to where they'll die. And the treatment, you have to keep them really, really calm. So since they're already wrapped around, it kills the worms up there. Um, these, we just had to give them medicine there was just shots that you have to do. There's also like the regular shots, like the rabies shots and all that, but we have to do it on our own. We go, we'll drive out of town to go get them and we'll meet up with other people who have the medicine and we'll give them the shots and then we'll have to drive all the way up. Next. Dogs with sarc um, whatever mange have like really scabby skin, right? Yeah. Because I think we had dogs with that. Um, this is Lois. We call them, y'all know Seth McFarland? Family Guy and all them. Yeah, we named them after characters from that. Those are some of the names. We couldn't remember all of them this morning. Um, the mom's name was Lois. What happened with her is um, she was two years old, pregnant, about she was due any, any day now. And we found them in the neighborhood, found her in the neighborhood, and we picked her up, we took her, pup squad told us to hold on to her, let them, let her do her thing. I'm gonna tell you all a funny story. Whenever she she stayed in our garage in a corner, we sectioned her off, and my dad was like, "Okay, go check, go check on the girl." So we went in there, or I went in there, and I ran out and said, "Dad, did you did you know the dogs were being born?" And he was like, "Oh no!" So he went in there, and I was freaking out because there were like wet dogs being born 
right when I walked in there. And he comes out and I'm sitting in the living room and he goes, hey, you wanna, I just saw one of them get born. It was pretty gross, you wanna see? And I was like, no, and he said, really? It's, they squeezed and I was like, no, and I started screaming and I ran off in my room because I didn't wanna hear about that. But um, we had to wait for the newborn and we have to go and whenever you're taking care of regular dogs, they, like whenever, when they don't have their mom and you're taking care of them, when you bathe them, usually it's the mom like licking them and that's how they clean them. But whenever you bathe them, you have to make sure that they're dry instantly or they can get sick and they can die. My friend once was fostering or holding onto them and um, she had to use hair dryers to dry them and they had to be dry within like five minutes or they'll shiver to death and they'll die. Um, another way that they die is, um, well, you have, when you adopt them, usually when you, they're babies, you have to get two because if there's only one, they lose the will to live because they're lonely and they don't want to be there if they don't have anybody else with them. That's also why they have their mom. They'll lay on their mom and they'll hear her heartbeat and that's what they do. There was one that we named, um, we ended up calling a baby girl. It was a girl and a boy. They were brother and sister. And it was the first ones that we had where the brother had died. And my mom, she was in complete tears. She couldn't, like for days, she couldn't do anything because she was just so heartbroken that it had died. And we had to take care of the girl. And what would happen is my mom would walk around with her in her shirt, like she'd wear a tank top and she would do that because it had to hear her heartbeat. And it was just really hard because we only had this one dog and we ended up naming her baby girl. She was adopted the first event that she went to. The worst part about fostering dogs would have to be whenever you let them go. Um, you, this was, I think, our first ones with Rachel and Ruby. Um, you take care of these dogs from the minute they're born. What happened with one of them? Um, the soon, you're seeing them being born and you're watching them grow up and then you have to let them go. You feed them and you bathe them. They're basically yours. There's, it's like a little brother, a little sister. You take care of them. And then the first one, me and my dad, we didn't go to them, we just packed them up. It was my mom and my brother, and they were like, I'm ready to get rid of them, they're annoying, let them go. But my dad complained about the first one, Rudy. My mom was saying that he was an ugly dog. <laughs> but he wanted so badly to take care of them, to keep them. But we couldn't because the problem is, if you keep the dogs, you don't have room for more. And um, I'm gonna tell you what kill and no kill shelters is. Um, what happened with one of them, there was, we had these like annual Christmas things where we like watch movies. I remember my mom and my dad brought these three dogs in. It was Wendy, Peter, and um, Tinkerbell. And it was two days after Christmas. And we, or what happened is there was a shelter, it was a kill shelter. Whenever they don't have enough room for the dogs, they euthanize them. And we had to take the puppies because we didn't want them to die. So we had to drive four hours in the middle of our movies and go get the puppies, brought them back. When we got back, I remember me and my friends were in the theater and we were all holding on to the puppies. And we ended up taking care of them until they were um, adopted. But kill shelters, when there's not enough, you euthanize them no kill you have to take care of them like you have to squeeze but those when you look at the how those are and how those are built they're not very clean they're not very but the kill shelters it's also bad because you have to kill all these dogs and it's just because you don't have enough room so that's why we have a lot of fosters my mom is usually on like the top list so anytime one of them about to die, she has to go and get it because she can't.